the grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is from Psalm 16, verses 1 and 2 and 8 and 9. Psalm of David, where he said, Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. My dear friends in Christ, there's an Australian missionary who told a thrilling story from years ago how, oh, there was a time when he was making a long trip along a lightly traveled road. And as he was making this trip on foot, well, what happened is he had no problem getting to his destination, but then the return trip made him feel a little bit uneasy because he happened to be making the return trip with a little bit of money along with him. Well, he was heading back, and as he was heading back, unfortunately, there was this bandit who found a lonely place along the route, and it was his plan to rob anyone who would happen to come that way, rob the person and leave him for dead or even kill him. Well, the missionary was really concerned about the circumstances, and so, well, what happened is that he started praying out loud to the Lord to be his refuge and strength to help him, to watch over him, to keep him safe and secured. And, and as he was praying like that, what happened is that that would-be bandit heard him talking. And when he heard him talking like that, he was absolutely convinced that there had to be at least two people who were heading his direction, so he decided that he wasn't going to attack them. He gave up on his plan to rob and kill. That night, that robber and the missionary happened to be in the same town, and the, the robber, he told somebody about his plan to rob someone and how it had been thwarted, and the missionary heard about that somehow or other. The word got around the town, and he ended up being absolutely convinced that the Holy Spirit must have made him pray his prayer out loud to give him the guidance and the protection that, that he needed. Well, a story like this, it does tell us God watches out for his people. But it's also important for us to pray to God, to watch out for us, to take care of us, because, well, when we pray to God and ask him for his help and his care, well, we're, we're expressing our faith that, that he is the one that can watch out for us and take care of us. We're saying we need his help, and, and we're saying, yeah, he is our refuge. The Lord is our refuge, someone who's going to protect us. Well, the apostles Peter and Paul, they both refer to this section in Psalm 16, and they quote that in their sermons, and they apply this section to the Lord Jesus. We heard Peter quote this psalm in our scripture rest lesson, for this past Sunday in Peter's Pentecost sermon. David had written in the psalm, Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. And I said, David wrote these words, but it's actually the Savior who's speaking. And when he says, Keep me safe, O Lord, for in you I take refuge, 
Well, think of our Savior coming to this earth. Think of his coming to be our Savior. And think of everything that he endured, everything that, that he had to go through. And our Savior certainly had it worse than we do, but maybe we can think of our, our current circumstances. Oh, we think about this virus, and, and it almost seems as if people seem to be trying to get us to believe that that virus is everywhere, and you don't want to touch anything for fear of that virus being there. That's why we have to wear masks and gloves and things like that. And now I know it is a real thing to be concerned about, but the fact of the matter is, is that that virus isn't everywhere. Because if it were, think of all of the people who would be infected and sick and all of those who would be dying and dead because of it. The fact of the matter is, is that, yeah, it's a dangerous thing, but, but it's not everywhere. When our Savior said, keep me safe, O oh God, the fact of the matter is, is that Satan was out there, basically kind of everywhere, out to get Jesus. When we think about Satan going after Jesus, oh, we can think about how at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, right after he was baptized, well, Jesus spent those 40 days out in the wilderness, and during that time, Satan threw the best of his temptations at Jesus. And then we can think of our Savior's passion and his crucifixion, and then again, what Satan was doing is he was throwing his best at Jesus, trying to do anything he possibly could to make Jesus fall. Well, those are two times in particular, but throughout Jesus' earthly life, Satan was always out there, always looking for that time when maybe he could find Jesus to be vulnerable. That's why Jesus said, keep me safe. Oh God, and the name God here, that stresses his almighty, his almighty power. Satan is a powerful being, make no doubt about that. But our Savior, our God, the almighty, the all-powerful God, his power, something that we can't grasp or imagine, Satan's power, great, but nothing in comparison to the power of our God. And now our, our God is the perfect refuge for us to look to. Right now, we probably think of our homes as being a, oh, a very important refuge place for us because, well, we're in our homes and we think maybe that's a place where we're safe from viruses and things like that. But they don't offer us the security, the safety, the refuge that we have in our God. Jesus knew that God was his refuge and he knew that God is our refuge as well. And when our Savior was close to God, when we're close to God, then we have nothing really to be afraid of, nothing to be concerned about. Oh, in the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, referred to that a couple days ago. But in that hymn, we sing, and do what they will, hate, steal, hurt, or kill. Though all may be gone, our victory is won, the kingdom's ours forever. It's just reminding us that Really, we have nothing to fear when we're close to God, when we're close to our Savior, because he gives us that kind of protection. He's giving a perfect protection for our eternal souls. So Jesus said to the Father, you are my Lord, apart from you I have no good thing. Jesus was totally dedicated to his mission totally dedicated to being our savior and to winning salvation for us. 
And he know, knew that only in doing God's will, only in doing that, in doing the Father's will, that's where there was real blessing for him. Likewise, we're so blessed when we would say to the Father, you are my Lord. You are what my life is all about. And that's why I'm so blessed. Now, Jesus, he totally submitted to God's will. And that, of course, is something that you and I and all the human race ever since Adam and Eve and their fall into sin have always struggled with. We struggle with that because we know that God wants us to say, thy will be done, but my sinful nature, your sinful nature, it wants to say, my will be done. And when we say, my will be done, then that changes things. That changes things. Then basically, instead of saying, you are my Lord, we're saying, you aren't my Lord, and therefore I'm apart from you, and I don't have any blessings from you. And now saying something like that, that's scarier than any virus, because that's separating ourselves from all of God's blessings. Then we don't have God's grace and love. We don't have the forgiveness of sins. We don't have heaven to look forward to. And that's why we want to say to our God, please help us so that we're not saying, my will be done. Please send your Holy Spirit to us so that we're joining Jesus always in saying, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Jesus always did the Father's will. That's why he was always happy, safe, secure, ultimately. Ultimately, that's the Savior. Did have struggles in this life, of course, too. But he was safe and secure, doing the Father's will. And right now, we'll say of ourselves, well, yeah, we too want to do God's will. We want to say, thy will be done, but the fact of the matter is, is that we sinners can't always do God's will. We can't always do God's will. Thankfully, we have a Savior who was always able to perfectly do God's will for us. And on the cross, he paid for all of our failures in trying to keep God's will. And isn't that a great reason for us to, well, as Jesus said, to set the Lord always before me and before you as well. Then no matter what happens in this life, we're not going to be shaken. We're not going to be shaken. As Jesus said there, our heart will be glad, our tongue will rejoice, our bodies will rest secure because God is our refuge. He'll always take care of us. In him, we are always safe and secure. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for watching over us. And when there are those times when Satan would come after us, please always be with us. Give us the strength that your word only can give so that we can fight against Satan and, and win. And of course, as we fight against Satan and win, we know that it's really you that's won the victory for us. Help us always to remember what a perfect refuge we have in you. How when we're close to you, to your word, how nothing can really hurt or harm us. And then we are so richly blessed because you are our Lord. You are 
our refuge. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.